So, once again, after deleting like two or three more apps, let's go ahead and get back to it, shall we? Uh, yeah, I was continually talking about uh, my closing thoughts about Baltimore's Road and Infant Station. And my closing thoughts, once again, were those are the questions, if you go back to the last video, the any of it, those are the questions that we have to start asking ourselves within our everyday lives, within everyday communities, because I'm telling you once again, just relying on people at the top, at wherever they are, you know, in the city is just not going to help you. It's just not going to help you. You know, I mean, yeah, I say it, if they cared so much for you and your community, why are they not the ones pouring in how many thousands or hundreds of thousands or millions of fix, to voluntarily fix up your parks, fix up your schools, you know, and stuff like that, you know. You know, why are they, they not doing, you know. And I look forward to doing what I can, like I said before, you know, to keep building and growing businesses, eventually online stores and more, where, like I said before, I can play that part independently in helping, you know, fund schools, fund, you know, playgrounds, fund God first, anything and everything I need to do to help empower the kids, empower their families, and make everybody helping, make, help make everybody feel loved, cared about, and at home, right in their own backyard. Because that is, at least for me, definitely one of the top things that it is about in today's modern day and age century, or what it should be about, is helping make everybody feel loved, confident, cared about, protected, and safe, you know, in their own backyard. But yeah, like I said, I'm gonna definitely have to hold on to playing Madden 18 for a little while longer before I switch to travel on my own to the next Madden. Well, Madden 20, that is. I got Madden 20. Either that or I'll just keep on alternating. I don't really know. I mean, we got Nick Foles this, this time around. And not to say I'm not going to still draft other quarterbacks and put Nick Foles as the backup because I might do that. I mean, I love Nick Foles, but at the same time, I like drafting. And I also know there's a lot of other guys I love, love to play with on Mad 20, so we'll see. We will see, ladies and gentlemen. We will see. But um, as we're getting more into it. So yeah, um, watch the Black Privilege movie. I think it's called either Black Privilege or just Black and Privilege or something like that. Watch that movie on Netflix once again. It's another eye-opening thing that everything they say in the movie is not new. But at the same time, it's something that definitely needs to be continuously brought up to the front line today, tomorrow, forever. For the for the visit of all people in Christ's name, because we got gotta stop, slash, gotta realize. If anything, the the biggest plague to our communities is our own self with the ignorant decisions that we make every day on how to embark within our everyday life. The biggest plague to our communities is not, you know, dare I even say, is not illegal immigrants. Now, not to say illegal, illegal immigrants don't have a, a, you know, they don't have a, I'm only, not to say they don't have a topic in that subject or whatever phrase I'm thinking about, you know, they do, you know, because trust me, to an extent, I want to be at the border welcoming some of them in, you know, some of them, because some of them are, I do believe some of the best, brightest that the future is going to see. Some, most to an extent, they need severe counseling. They need severe medical treatment and severe a lot of things. But indeed, we need to, once again, do what we got first can to take care of what we got here first and then welcome them in. We don't, we already got too many, too many people milking off our welfare system as it is. Too many of our own citizens m m doing that. Think about it. We need to do what we got to do, God first. To help everybody. I mean, God bless legal immigrants because we definitely want them to come in, but we want them to come in legally. We want them to know these are the laws and the rules of the land. Please abide by them. And if you're not, you're going to be treated like God first, everybody else here. So on and so on. I don't think that's rocket science. I think that's basic two plus two common sense. But at the same time, for the most part, I can definitely assure you I mean, there's two different ways to look at the situation. But one of the top ways I can tell you, you know, we really, really need to, really need to look, look at it is. How many problems do we have of our very own without illegal immigrants here? Think about it. We have so many, like again, these mass shootings. Think about that for a second. A lot of failing schools. Think about that for a second. A lot of failing, really a lot of failing things everywhere. 
across the board. Trust me. Before we welcome in a ton more, we need to do what we got to do to fix what we was already broken in our own system. Dare I say it. Within our own com communities. Diversity is a strength if it, you know, doesn't kill you, dare I say. It's like that phrase, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger better, yeah. Because trust me, diversity ain't, is and can be a strength. Because think about how in God's name did we all get here. Think about it, you know. Everybody except for the Native Americans, think about how we got here, you know, and so on. So diversity absolutely can be and for the most part is a strength. A strength, actually. If it doesn't kill you, that is. If they're not killing, if they're not killing innocent individuals, ladies and gentlemen, diversity is a strength. If it's not killing innocent individuals, now if it is, then we can do a complete, yeah, I guess, three sixty or one eighty, whatever the, the um, term there is, and rethink it. Other than that, think about it now. The what the equation just turned into you, you know. And I'm just saying. That movie, Black Privilege, on Netflix, watch it. I loved it, honestly. I loved it. Everything in there is not new. Everything in there we've known for possibly the last you know, decade, if not more. But it needs to be brought, once again, to the forefront to this generation that, once again, race relations, gang violence, poverty, whatever, in many cases, once again, we are our own freaking plague. By the way, we govern... Our communities, in many cases, were our own freaking plague. It's not illegal immigrants. It's not these guns alone. It's not whatever else you would have put there. It's us. Our mentalities, our personalities, our attitudes. Again, we've all been corrupted in comfort. I wouldn't even say it's a pipeline at this point, but I definitely and I wouldn't say it's even blood either. You know, I wouldn't say it's any of that. It's just all bought into mentalities, ladies and gentlemen. Again, it, when you don't know Jesus, the, one of the best ways I can point out point this out to you, when you don't know Jesus, you will let yourself easily be corrupted by bought into mentalities, trying to follow the pack because that's what is considered cool and trendy. One of the top things I want to help get as many kids out of this upcoming school year in whatever God first independent way I can is I want to help get as many kids out of that mentality as possible other than the victimhood mentality. Get them out of the mentality, period, that um, let, about following the crowd. Because I'm telling you this, you know, some things, even my own self, sometimes I do follow the crowd. But for the most part, I'm an independent thinker. So even when I am following the crowd, trust me, it was an independent thought, you know, to follow the crowd.